take a look at what happens to the density of water as it heats up from cold to hot. Well, changing the temperature of water affect the buoyant force that it's able to exert. Uh, it's, this is a very simple experiment. In fact, the temperature difference is simply the difference in temperature from our cold water. to our hot water. Now is one denser than the other? Is one able to exert more buoyant force than the other? Let's take a closer look. So here's the experiment. This graduated cylinder is filled with cold water. This one's filled with hot water. And I've adjusted these nail polish bottles so that if I put it in the cold water, see what happens. It just barely floats. There's enough buoyant force to support that bottle. Now if we switch it over to the hot water, it sinks. There's no longer enough buoyant force to support the bottle. And the reason is that these particles are moving faster, they're further apart, they're less dense, so they're not able to exert as much upward force against the bottle as they were over in this bottle. This one, the water particles are slower, they're closer together, and so this water is just a little bit denser, and it's able to exert an upward force strong enough to support one of these bottles when it's inside the container. If we fill the graduated cylinder part way up with cold water and then hot water on top of that, we can actually get the bottle to stop halfway up the graduated cylinder where it matches the density of that temperature water. Here's the second variation of this experiment. Once again, we're going to start with cold water, and we're going to add our nail polish bottle to it. And we see that it floats. The cold water is buoyant enough, it exerts enough upward force to lift this bottle. Now, in this container, we're going to use isopropyl alcohol. Now, let's try a bottle on that and see what happens. It goes down, and it goes down rather quickly, which means that the alcohol must be much less buoyant than what the water is. Now let's try it one last time. In this example, instead of using our little bottles here, I'm going to use an ice cube. Once again, if we drop the uh, ice into the cold water, we would expect it to float, and that's what we see. But let's try it in the alcohol. And... We drop an ice cube into alcohol, it sinks to the bottom. So once again, we can see the differences in buoyancy between the water and the alcohol. The alcohol must be much less dense than the water is because it's not able to support the ice cube. So here are three simple examples of what you can do with density. Uh, these bottles are actually fairly simple. They are made with nail polish bottles or other little bottles that have simply been adjusted so that they just barely float when put into cold water.